The Grown Pavilion is an attempt to inspire the uh, constructing world, the design world and the broader audience to, let's say, envision a building process with only bio-based materials or with more bio-based materials than ever before. We started this project in collaboration with a lot of different uh, groups and people, but the most important people are Eric Larenbeek, who's the designer and a sort of bio-based inventor, Pascal Le Bouc, who is a beautiful designer and sculptor, and then me, who is a storyteller and a creative concept uh, thinker. And the three of us decided we need to make sure that there's more envisioning of how the future can be bio-based wise. Welcome at the Growing Pavilion. We made a pavilion completely made out of bio-based materials. Why? Because we believe that with bio-based we can have a better future in building and living. If you build your house in a conventional way, before you even live in it, already 51% of the total CO2 emissions is released during the construction process. But when you use bio-based material to build, way less CO2 gets released, even more, a lot of CO2 gets stored. I'll come back to that later. The biggest part is the facade. It's like around 125 square meters mycelium panels, or like 88 panels. The floor, it's like around 50 square meters cattail. It's like a bio-laminate. Wooden construction, it's Kerto wood. And we have a cotton ceiling. That are actually the, the most important materials. So we create a new aesthetic, a new appreciation for bio-based, and we show for the first time ever how you can really construct a pavilion, a building, with only bio-based materials. What's important to show in the design is that you really feel it's a, a growing movement, that it's really, how to say, grow and moves in different ways. Um, um, and that's what I want to show or to express in the facade of the pavilion, to make it a little bit expressive. So, so the nice thing is about the people uh, contributing to the, to the growing pavilion that almost every designer involved has designed the whole system uh, uh, from the raw material all the way to final product. The material we make is a mycelium material, a mushroom material, because it's made out of the root structures of mushrooms. So we know the mushrooms that are the fruiting bodies, like the apple of the tree, but what we use is the, the roots, which are under the soil. It's this, this underground network, which you normally see in the woods when you would lift up a, a leaf. Then you see these white vessels, these white wires, and that's the, the mycelium. And um, that's searching for biomatter. So what we basically do, we, um, we collect bio-waste, biometer, um, such as hemp stalks, and then we put a little bit of mushroom on it, mushroom roots, and that will find its way. So it will grow as a microorganism. It starts with one cell and it will unite uh, and it will take over the whole form. And uh, once colonized, fully colonized, you have a white solid block full with fibers. Mycelium is like a very interesting material, it's like clay. You can really modeling all the shape of the pavilion like a sculpture. And for me it was an adventure to work with this new bio-based clay. When you want to use wood, you have to grow a tree. You have to wait 50 years and then you can cut the tree and then you can make a table. But now we can um, grow a table right away from a microorganisms without having to wait for 50 years. 
And this cycle, this takes a few weeks instead of 50 years. And then we can do everything on spot. So instead that we have to cut a, a tree in a rainforest, transport it to the Netherlands in order to make a table or a house, we can suddenly use the local feedstocks like this hemp fibers, what we use, which grow in only three months. Bio-based materials are amazing as an alternative. You can grow them all the time, everywhere, and moreover, they store CO2. So when you use materials made out of plants, you don't release CO2, you actually store CO2. Your house can be a storage for CO2 instead of a CO2 problem. So for the Growing Pavilion, we are uh, producing a, a, a bio-laminate, as we call it, which is a very thin layer uh, of organic material, fiber, and a biopolymer compressed into a thin sheet, uh, and that we uh, use on, 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 the, on the floor and on the furniture. And in case of Growing Pavilion, we've used the cattail, uh, all the fibers from the cattail, um, and uh, some natural pigments uh, to give it a certain look. And uh, that finishing material is being used on the flooring of the pavilion uh, and also on some of the uh, objects and, and furniture pieces. What's so great is about the Chrome Pavilion is that we have the possibility to show this technology on a large scale, that we are finally able um, to create actual impact with this technology. And that's what our world needs. And we have two goals. One is to show people how great it is to build with bio-based materials, to give them explanation. What is, why is it better than with normal materials? But also showing them how beautiful it is to use bio-based products. And how, how, let's say, how crazy you can go with reinventing them. The future is to create a new aesthetic, um, a more expressive aesthetic, because the nature is the best designer. And to use again this power, this beautiness in our daily life. That's actually the statement what I like to make with the other designs with Eric, just to bring it back in our home. I believe it's the future of building. Yes, because we have, to, uh, we have to break through our old patterns and we have to find new ways of fabrication and uh, this can be the solution.